telephone you later tonight. You'll know by then and you can tell me the worst. All the best. After all, I'd rather you didn't have a husband. I know it can't be Martin, but if it is, I wonder how he's feeling. I'm more concerned about you. I love you. Mrs. Elgin, Chief Inspector Luke. This is the only one I have of my husband. You see, he lived in France before the war. Mm -hmm. We'd only been married three months before he was posted missing, believed killed. It's of the dog, really. Yes, they all look like the same man. These all came through the mail in the last three months. Yes, just a photograph in a plain envelope. No idea who sent them. I don't see how it could be my husband. I mean, if he were alive, well, he'd... Well, he'd come himself, surely. You're engaged to be married again, I believe. Blackmail? Give us 50 pounds or you'll be up for bigamy? No, then they'll wait until you got married. And only the, the one message. Yes, on the last one. South End train, 3.23, November the 1st. see him close it's well it's nothing like it was the coat I think uh, take him inside right sir he's not your husband sure oh yes quite sure Makes no sense. None of it. It seems such a mad thing to do. 
dress up to look like Martin, get your photograph in the papers and send the pictures to me. Why? Attention, please. Attention, please. Passengers proceeding across London are reminded that all services are restricted to earn the car. St. Peter's Gate Square. Hang out. Master Jeffrey Levitt hasn't been on the blower, if that's what you mean. He will be. Will, darling. Run these up to my room, will you, when you've got a minute? Father in the study. Now look here, young Before lady. Before you ask, no, I'm not helpless. Any more of that, my girl, and you will be. I'll take them up, my dear. Mm. I'm going up anyway. Thanks. Did he not keep the rendezvous? I saw him, yes. And for a moment I thought it was Martin. But only for a moment. An imposter. In the distance, a very good one. This photograph. The Honourable Mrs. Garthwaite, Lord Brace, Mr. Robin Garthwaite, and friend. Even though he's in the background, it's very like him as I remember him. All that hairy martial rubbish on his face. <laughs> Dear silly fellow. You are sure? Very wrong, this. <laughs> Frightens me. A shock, yes. Dear girl, he must have known Martin to have imitated him so well. I find that cruel and wicked. Yet somehow you seem to understand it. <laughs> the essence of it, perhaps. An evil thing, an attempt to reverse the process of mourning. Mourning, Meg, is an untying. Everything should be consciously put aside, accepted and faced. Painful. But in the end, good must come of it. And this reversal of it when the thing is nearly achieved is a... a wickedness. An attempt to kill the spirit. I'm so thankful it wasn't, Martin. It's not very nice, is it? But suddenly I... I didn't want to be 19 again and married and... an entirely different person. I wish Geoffrey would telephone. Name, Morrison, Walter, commonly known as Dud. In and out of jail before the war. During the war, no record at all. After the war, back in jail again for five years. Been out six weeks. Never heard of Martin Elgin. Say, you're an actor. Lost your moustache in Stern, so quite a false one. Havoc, eh? Jack Havoc. Remember now, the two of you, robbery with violence. Have I got ten years? Have I got anything to do with this? No. Oh. Don't see how he could have. Still safely in jail. All right, on your way. I... I can go? You haven't done anything yet. Go on, get going. <laughs> I wonder what scared him. You don't think he could be Elgin? Duds? The girl says no, she ought to know. It could be. We don't know what Duds was up to during the war. Might have been a hero, 
finally went mental and forgot all about it. I don't believe it. No, me neither. All the same, better make sure. Look at it. Just the night for it. Always pick up duds if we want him. Whiskers and sodas, Pete. Two scotch, dear? Yes. What a night. Large ones? Yes, doubles. That's right. It gets right into your very bones, doesn't it? Gives the old rheumatics something to think about. Splash? Yes, please. Seven and four, please. One pound. Nothing smaller? No, I'm sorry. Right, bring the change back in a moment. No, I told him straight. I said it's all very fine for you. I'm going to You look as if you need it. Now, are you a copper? No. I just want you to tell me something. I'm not saying nothing. Why did you have yourself photographed as Martin Elgin? Did someone put you up to it? Here's my home address. There'll be money there if you'll bring me the whole story. I, I don't know. Why ask me? Because I'm going to marry Mrs. Elgin. I want to know what's behind all this. Well, you never know with a man, do you? You'll change, dear. Twelve and eightpence. I won't get you into trouble. I swear I won't. Give themselves heartburn, they will. What a way to carry on. Where's Havoc, Duds? Where, where, where's Havoc? Havoc, Havoc, where's Havoc? Havoc, Havoc. Oh, Havoc. Where's Havoc, Duds? Where's Havoc? Havoc! 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 He's been there years! Liar! Yeah, liar! 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 You always was a liar, Duds! <laughs> Take him back to the cellar. What are you implying, Inspector? Dudge Morrison, Martin Elgin. They could be the same man. No. Well, I don't know the unfortunate Morrison, but after what you've told us, I can assure you that he and Martin had nothing whatsoever in common. Martin was a, a gentleman. As far as we know, the only crime he ever committed was a so-called poem to his dog. You didn't believe me. I swear they're not the same. They couldn't be. Apart from anything else, it, it just wasn't in Martin's makeup to do anything so violent. Commando, wasn't he? Yes, but... Ever know him out of war? No. People change. Not to that extent! The inspector's job is to be suspicious and to ask questions, Meg. You don't be cross with him. I've got myself worked up waiting for Geoffrey, Mr. Levitt, to call. I... I'm sorry. Levitt mislaid himself, has he? Got to be going. <laughs> Good night, Mrs. Elgin. All the same, I think I'd better pick up Duds Morrison again. Get you to take a look at him. 
Corroborate Mrs. Elgin's statement. Hello. I... Yes, yes, he's here. Hold on. It's for you, Inspector. Luke speaking. Pump walk. Right. I'll go there now. Didn't expect that. Not being very bright. Must ask you to take a look at Morrison tonight, Cannon. Policeman on the beat found him down by the river. Dead. How did he die? He didn't die of neglect. Doctor? You always manage it, don't you, Luke? Every time. Just when I'm going to have my dinner. Special tonight? The best steak and kidney. Pudding, mind you, not pie. Finished here? Yes. Do the job properly in the morning. Well? As far as I can tell, he was killed by a blow on the back of the head. Blunt instrument? His face is covered in blood. How long ago? Not more than a quarter of an hour. The fellow who found him was nearly a witness, I reckon. <coughs> All right to clean him up? Mm -hmm. Some light, please. Seen him before, sir? I'd like to talk to you, Inspector. You go to the station. No, no, I want that jacket. I want to take it home with me. Bring Dad's clothes to the office, pronto. And get the usual inquiries going. Iris, yeah? you belong to that pub, Mrs. Gorney. She won't let you get a word in, but ask her if she knows anything. If it's not all chat, bring her to my office. Yes, sir. You found him, didn't you? Oh, yes, sir. Notice anything in particular? Well, only one thing, sir. I, I couldn't place it. Uh, a sound like someone Shaking a length of chain. Chain? Harness, do you mean? Well, in a way, yes, sir, but uh, heavier somehow. Get going. I've seen ghosts in a minute. Jeffrey Levitt's out in the binge, I expect. I wish he were out on a binge, Will. That'd be easy. I'd be very angry with him and adore forgiving him and it'd all be over. You really rattle. I'm terrified, Will. Chiefly because I, I don't know why I should be so scared. It, same sort of feeling as wanting a nightlight when I was little. Mm. Fanciful. Always was. It's your trouble. Strong drinks, the stuff for you. Go on. Go on up and have a double. Have one for me. All right. Good idea. Oh, you'll keep an ear open for the telephone, will you? Both of them. Twitching. Like an elephant. The poor boy was a complete stranger to me. I should have known Martin. But the coat? Oh, that was Martin's. And it came from my house. Oh, it did, did it? No, when you last saw it? I've been trying to remember. Some weeks ago, I think. Oh. Not some time ago, after all. You... Oh, no, Inspector, I'm not as scatterbrained as all that. It's very difficult to mistake that particular jacket, and I know it's been hanging up in my wardrobe at the rectory until quite recently. It was certainly there when this winter began. It's the time of year we old people notice, Inspector. 
The first cold day came early this year, St. Matthew's Day, the 21st of September. Oh, thank you. There, then. Sure. Oh, yes, I uncovered it when I took down this overcoat. It always reminded me so vividly of Martin. Understand, sir, what this means? Oh, of course I do. Oh, yes, someone very close to us indeed must be involved. And I must find out who. That's why I'd like the jacket, Inspector. I must take it home with me. Oh, thank you. I think you can find out. Oh, you? I'll find out. Have to send George here with you. Well, I prefer to deal with it by myself. Dan, sir. Evidence. Coat got to be produced in court. Very well, Inspector. But I must warn you, Sergeant, it may be very painful for you. Very embarrassing and painful indeed. If you wouldn't mind waiting in here a moment, sir. We'll just go and fetch the coat. Remarkable man, the canister. sir. You're right. One of a type. All the same. Ought to be starving. Give away all they've got. It never want. This is what we found on him, sir. Is this all right, sir? Oh, yes. Cannon will come back with the truth about that coat, whatever it costs him. But who in that household could have smuggled it out to Dudge Morrison? Girl? Or perhaps that new chap of hers. You're wrong. Perhaps it was a miracle. Perhaps there's another card in the pack. Good evening, sir. Just the weather for trouble, isn't it? There's been a jailbreak from the scrubs. Man who goes by the fanciful name of Havoc. Daylight at last. Havoc, eh? That's Morrison's pal. I'm glad that one of us is pleased. Unfortunately, it isn't as simple as that. No, sir? No, sir. By the time your people were picking up Morrison's dead body, Havoc was only just making his break. And that was the other side of London. Anyway, he was killing someone else at the time. All the same, there is an association here. Unless he's picked up soon, I'm pretty certain that he'll crop up in this part of the world, so I thought you ought to know something about him. Havoc is an evil man, Inspector. Have you ever met a truly evil man? Can't say. I've met three in my lifetime, and they all had something in common. Something I can't describe exactly, but... Oh, you recognize it when you see it. If you have time. It's like seeing death for the first time. Born killer, that it? Mm -hmm. I thought so the first time I saw him. And now I know. <laughs> he was lucky over that robbery with violence case. That was very nearly murder. How did he get out of jail? It took him two and a half years to perfect his plans. He became a psychiatric case. Oh, lead swinging. At first. Finally, he was almost genuine. Anyway, he was so convincing that they gave him an interview with a specialist. Outside the prison. He gets rid of the two warders. Knifes the doctor. And out of the window. Quite a customer. Mm. You know, look. It's my belief that he planned this escape, timed it for November, on the chance of there being a fog. Find that hard to believe, sir. What, that he made his plans so far ahead? Yes. You'll learn if he comes your way. I'd like to see him. I'd like to see him dead. No, you've done it. Rolly, Tom, give us a hand with this. Put you soon, get the gentleman a mug of water. I'm sorry, sir. It's been a terrible mistake. You wouldn't have harmed a hair of your head, sir. 
Once I find out which one it was that did it, sir, I'll skin him alive, sir. There's nothing I won't do to him, sir. It was a mistake, I swear. It is just that you look a bit like a friend of ours, sir. Hey, Crutchies, where's that water? Come on, now. Where's the man I was with? He and Dad's was together, I told you. I never saw him before this afternoon. I remember you. I remember your voice, sir. You call him a liar. No, no, sir, not me. It must have been my brother, young Tom here. He's a bit funny. Got blowed up in the war. Never been the same since. Co corporal. Corporal. That's it, Tom. Boy, right you are. Dad's was a corporal, sir. Quite correct, boy. Who was it you kept asking for? Someone called Havoc. Who was that? Havoc? That's right. If this, uh, what do you call him, Duds, was the corporal, what was Havoc? The sergeant? Oh, <laughs> listen to that now. There's brains for you. That's what comes of being properly educated. <laughs> All right, then. Where is this sergeant? Well, to tell you the truth, sir, that takes a bit of explaining. We don't rightly know. We've been looking for him, haven't we? I've been for nearly three years. Three years. Play in the streets long enough, they say, and you'll see everyone you know. It's true. Shut up, all of you. You'll only confuse the gentleman. We seen Duds this evening, coming out of the railway station. We followed him. We lost him. We found him again coming out the pub. And then when we bumped into you, sir, well, to tell you the truth, we thought you was Havoc. I still want to know what happened to the corporal, Duds. Uh, Tom hit him, uh, by mistake. Then after we set on you, sir, Tiddy went back to Duds. Uh, I only gave him a little one, sir. Just a little one to help him on his way. I was more interested in you, sir. I thought... You thought I was Havoc. can't tell when you're lying. Come now, the truth. I did. I did. I took the old coat and gave it away. It's very silly to give away something that doesn't belong to you. To whom did you give it? Some poor fellow at the door. Ah, I see. Someone you know. Now, who was that? I gave it to Mrs. Cash. Mrs. Cash. Will, please fetch Mrs. Cash. Major Elgin. You, Major Elgin. Elgin? No, Tom boy, no. A major's gone, poor chap. You know that. No one knows that better than you. Don't look like him. Don't talk like him. But that's who he is, Major Elgin. You were in the army with Major Elgin. The Major and Tom was together when they trod on a mine. And the Major was killed. That will be about four months after our own little job. I'm sure the gentlemen don't want to hear you and your brother's life history, Rolly. Ah, uh, Teddy. What little job? You're talking about a raid, aren't you? That's right, sir. And Major Elgin was in command of the raid? Of course. It was a Major's own house. Rolly, for the love of Pete. Where he lived as a kid, anyway. That's why he was chosen. How we came to go at all. Then why are you so anxious to find Havoc? Dud said he was in stir. But he was lying, same as he always did. Havoc were too smart for that. Now Jack's got away with it. He's collected the treasure. And he's a-living on it in glory. In glory while we, his mates, are tramping the gutter. That's why we've got to find him. No, you've said it. No, you've opened your big mouth so wide you've swallowed yourself. Treasure? What on earth do you mean? Buried treasure? Bars of gold and chest full of jewels. That's right, sir. You must be raving mad. 
Not of you. Out of your mind. Tom, come here. here. Bring that package with you. You know the one I mean. You wait till you see this. This will prove it to you. Come on, Tom. Now, just you have a look at this. Proper gold leaf and everything. Master fine it is. You ought to have seen the singing bird, sir. Now, that was real pretty. In a golden cage it was. You wound it up and it sang its head off. What have you done with the frame, Tom? All gold it was and carved. Now, come on, boy, where is it? He sold it. Got a fiver for it. Why didn't you tell me? When was this? It didn't get as much as Rowley got for the cage with a bird in it. Prettily it sang, Hello. sweetly prettily. Hey, got all of 12 knicker for it. And this is just the beginning, sir. Oh, I've got to see what won the 430. Souvenirs of the raid they were. Have a pull them down from the top of the cliff. Major gave each one of us something. A little memento, he said. Here she is, Cannon. Come in, Mrs. Cash. Good evening, Cannon. You wanted to see me about the jacket? I'll sit here, shall I? Yes, by all means. Um, Mary tells me that she gave it you some weeks ago. Is that true? No, not exactly. I don't want to get anybody into trouble. But I bought it from her for ten pounds. And having bought it from Mary, what did you do with it? That's my business, Cannon. Oh, yes, of course it is. Your business entirely. But come over and have a look at it. Perhaps you'll recognize it and that'll be a great help. I don't suppose that'll clean. Yes, that's the jacket I bought from Mary. Not much good saying it isn't. The police will want to know what you did with it. Then I must tell them, wasn't I? I'll look it up in my little book. If I remember, I sent it down to Mr. Robinson, the second-hand clothes dealer. You deal in second-hand clothes, Mrs. Cash? I'm not an old clothes woman, if that's what you mean. You know the sort of district this is, Sergeant. Good homes, good people going down. Old ladies, for instance, needing money more than jewellery. Bits of lace, furniture. I like to do good where I can, so I trot round helping. Sometimes to buy, sometimes to sell. And sometimes I have things given to me for charity. And I turn them into money and send the little cheque to one of the societies. Well, you put it all down in your little book. And I put it all down in my little book. Mrs. Cash, I wonder if you'll be kind enough to go down to the kitchen and send Mary to me. By all means, Cannon. In a few minutes' time, Sergeant Pickett here will take you to your home. I expect he'll want to see the book. By all means, Cannon. I don't mind the kitchen. I did enough work there in your dear wife's day. You'll come and fetch me and we'll go across to my little house together. Good night, Cannon. Oh, uh... I shall be sending something to the Church Restoration Fund in a week or two. Just a little something. Elgin's widow. Elgin's jacket. And now Elgin's solicitors. How's the caretaker? Dead, sir. Clean, expert wound, according to the doctor. Notify departments, Luke. Tell them they're wasting their time hunting for contacts. This is where havoc has been. Where's he going next, I'd like to know. Seems to be after a document of some sort. Something to do with Elgin. Well, if he hasn't already found it, if we can figure out where he'll look next, we can be there to meet him. Come in. Oh, sir. Come and sit down, Mary. Did the ten pounds cover it? Did it? Yes, sir. On my soul, sir. It was only three pounds at first. Lovely white shirts for Will and the stores. And the rest was interest? She didn't trouble me at first. But before I knew where I was, it, it was ten pounds and I hadn't got it. And she offered to take men's clothes instead. Did you offer this coat to Mrs. Cash or did she ask you for it? I... I don't know, sir. Yes, I can understand that. Run along, Mary. And don't do it again. Forgive me, sir. Please forgive me. I can't forgive sins, my dear girl. It's silly old women like you who encourage wicked old women like Lucy Cash. Oh, 
over 300 per cent. I wonder how many homes Lucy Cash has broken up. I've known Lucy Cash trotting about here for nearly 30 years. I've seen her walk down a street and window curtains tremble. Blinds creep down and keys turn softly in locks. She passes like a shudder. Yes? Yes, I'll get him. Pick it here. Yes, sir. Knifed. Havoc. Yes, sir. Nearly finished here. Right, sir. I must go. Tell that policeman I'll be at home if he wants me. All right. And thanks for the tea. She's gone, Cock. Who's gone, Will? Old Cash and Carey. She said she'd be at home any time you care to call. Well, I shan't be able to get much out of her anyway, I'm afraid. It's a wonderful colour she's got there. She could run anything. Good night, sir. Aye, aye. Why, well, what's the trouble? She's got the sign out. Mark Cash? From the attic. That's for your benefit. Well, how do you mean? Mm, that means she don't want no visitors while you're around. A signal? Yeah, that's right, Cock. You know, I noticed that before. All the years we've been here, I've never seen Mark Cash have no visitors when the lights on in the attic. And where do you think you're going, my pretty dear? To the new house. I, I just think Geoffrey might have gone there. And why on earth should Master Levitt do a thing like that? Oh, Will, he's not at his flat, and I I've telephoned everywhere I can think of. I I'm so afraid of... I don't know what I'm afraid of. It's the only place to look. OK, but you're not going without me. We understand one another, then. Not quite so fast, sir, if you don't mind. If we let you go, I was wondering what you was thinking of doing. Doing? Let me go? Oh, a little mistake. Well, under the circumstances, I shall forget it. Hey, Titty, listen, everybody. Bloke's been found murdered in Pump Walk. That's Duds. He's a deader. That's a lie. You done it, Titty, when you went back. You told the gentleman you'd give him something to go on with. Shut your big mouth! If one of us done it, all of us done it. Him as well. Geoffrey? There aren't any lights on. The lights are switched off at the main. Well, he isn't here then. No. I left my blue earrings here the other day. They're upstairs, I think. Shall I pop down and put the lights on? Oh, no, don't bother. I can manage. Nice little place you have here. All friends spanking you. So you'll get married, have your housewarming party, and your guests will tread their cigarette ends into the carpets. Well, it'll look more lived in, I suppose. Hmm, it's pretty. Look at that lovely frame, too. There's workmanship for you. Did Master Geoffrey give you that? No, Martin gave it me during the war. He came home on leave once, suddenly. He was terribly excited. Of course, he couldn't tell me anything, but... I think from what he said, he must have been on a raid on his old home in Brittany. Oh, yes, that place he left you in his will. Santa Deal something or other. Santa Deal sur mer mm. Why don't you never go over there and have a look-see? Oh, Will, I've... I've never felt like it. That was a side of Martin I never really knew. That part of the world's never held much attraction for me. Missing, believed, killed. There's an estate agent there, lets it for me during the season. I, I, I just don't feel like going near the place. Yeah, I can understand that. I remember once when... Here, yeah. now where are them earrings of yours? I don't know. Perhaps they're on the dressing table. Now why didn't I put the lights on in the first place? It won't take a minute. Oh, don't bother, it's Downstairs not... Downstairs in... somewhere. All right. The switch is in the uh, kitchen, I think.
What are you doing here? You stop here, Charlie. You there, love? It's Will. Will you? He, he had a knife. Will, I, I'm so frightened. See him, did you get a sight just of him? Just a minute, just a minute. He, it was just a, a dark shadow. What was he wearing? Can you remember? It was just a shape, like in a nightmare. Coat? Yes. Yes, I think perhaps he did. It was something flapping around him. Get your glass of water, love. Yes, I, no, no, thank you. Could have been an overcoat. I, you'll think I'm mad, but I, I got the impression of dark wings. Hat? Don't think he wore a hat. I, I can't remember. Where did you lot spring from? Came here because of what happened at the lawyer's. What happened, Inspector? Don't tell Our me. Our investigations about the man we're looking for led us to believe that he was bound to come to this house. You see, he doesn't seem to be after money or valuables. He's after a document of some sort. Something connected with your late husband. Any ideas? Document? The will was proved, or, or whatever it is, a long time ago. Letter, maybe. Something personal. No, I've nothing of Martin's any longer. We've lost him, sir. There's a window on the half landing. Two officers thought they saw a shadow and went after him. There's no sign of him. He's swallowed up in the fog. Uh, this is your shoe, madam. Thank you. Torrance. Sir? Was anyone stationed under that window? Uh, no, sir. Why not? Well, because it's the only one it didn't seem possible for him to use, sir. It's a sheer drop across a spike railing. He must have wings. I don't know how he didn't get killed. We've underestimated him. We're not thinking in his class. Now, make no mistake, Wilk. He marked that one window as the one we consider unnegotiable. And then used it. I don't believe it. Can't happen to me. Must find him. Even if we can hear to be lame, blind and half-witted for the rest of our natural. Look at it. Be like looking for a flea in a burst feather bed. Time you were home and in bed, my girl. Good idea, Mrs. Elgin. We'll send you back in one of the police cars. Quicker to walk, I should think. Inspector, is there any news of Mr. Levitt? Afraid not, no. What on earth can have happened to him? He's had some accident, I know he has. You've got to find him, Inspector, please. He promised to telephone me, he promised. Don't worry, He's Mrs. Elgin. He's in some Elgin. terrible danger, I know he is. Please, Inspector. Don't worry, got it in hand. All reports not in yet. Let you know as soon as we hear anything. Promise. 
Come on, love, now, don't you worry about Master Levitt. Don't even give it another thought. All right, Inspector. Just where is Mr. Jeffrey Levitt, do you suppose? No idea, sir. Didn't you say something about chains? Yes, sir, length of chain, rattling. Chain? Don't mean a thing to me. I'll be on my way. Anything else sound like chains? Rattle of heavy chain, wasn't it? Rattle. Coins? Coins in a wooden collecting box? Yes, sir. Maybe. It's possible, though. But we still have to find Mr. Havoc. Good night. Night, sir. some grub, Ted. Roll has been gone a long time. <laughs> He's been gone too long, Ted. Why hasn't he come back? I'll tell you why. He's run away. He shopped us. Shut up, can't you? One word more out of you, no? Come on then, Teddy. What'll you do? What'll you do then, Ted? <laughs> do it then. Come on, use your boots if you want to. You're very handy with your boots. I don't remember. Here I be, Teddy. <laughs> You're drunk. I might have known it. You've got no sense. You've been in the all-night market, you yeah, are drinking yourself silly. I never ought to have trusted you. Look, Kitty. What's going on? You've got a secret you don't want to share, Rowley? Well, you've got to share it. You've got to share it with us all. Come on, let's have a look. Look. Look, Kitty. It's him. It's Jack Avick. Stabbed. Broke out of Wormwood Scrubs, it says here. Wormwood scrubs, After six it's years. It stabbed to death, you think. Can't be Havoc. In Clink all this time. Looks like Duds was right after all. And he's free. And we'll be able to find him, don't you see? We won't be the only ones trying to find him now. He'll have to lie low. You too, Tiddy. They'll be looking for you too. Shut up! He's a clever one, is Jack. He'll take some finding. Five feet eleven, green eyes, as fresh complexion. Hello, Rolly. Hello, Tom. Mind if I take a few? That's been in yet? Duds don't come in here. Never been here in his life. That's funny. He seemed to know all about you lot. I've been on the bash. <laughs> we were just reading this before you came in. Oh, that? Yes, I've been reading it myself. All of it? All that interested me. Hmm. There's a lot of interesting news today, Jack. Did you read it all? Yeah, I think so. Read the middle page? No. Nope. You should. It's a bit about Duds. He's dead. He's been done in. What the... He did something soft, I suppose, and it caught up with him. No! When did you last see Duds? Yesterday afternoon. We meant to follow him and speak to him, but he gave us the slip. Well, that saw you plenty of times. He was working for me. He gave me all the news indirectly. About Tiddy Doll here and how you've all been looking for me. Living like a lord. That was it, wasn't it? You always did talk too much, Rowley. Who gave us away? Who? Your name is Doll. 
You come from a two-house town called Tiddington. You attached yourself in the middle of the war to the local army camp, the two-stroke 4009 transit camp. End of war, flung out pronto. Reported to civilian police and forbidden the district. Do you want to hear any more? Ah, you poor, stupid idiots. Tramping up and down the streets, making a filthy row. You're no mystery. No, you, Jack. No, the state you're in. Like you was in the war. Time after you'd done those two centuries in. Listen, Havoc, you come here because we've got cover and you're on the run. So what? Who moves first? You whitey? No, Jack, no. Tilly don't understand about you. Besides, we got private reasons of our own to think of. Oh. None of you with a real record and you don't want the police around, is that it? Here to a go, we had a little accident. But we keep ourselves to ourselves. That's the only way out. I know, they told me. Two ways in, one way out. Listen, Havoc. I've been thinking. There's enough of us here for a bloke to hide among. Even in the street. Supposing he wanted to get from place to place. You've got a brain. And it works when you use it. They're wonderful risky, mind you. If all of us didn't know what we was doing. I rather think we should have a conference, Corporal. Pick your officers, Captain. Uncle Charlie in it? No. Oh, good morning, sir. Mrs. Elgin's waiting. All right. We got any street musicians in our manor, you know, street band? Yes, we have, sir. We'll get somebody to check on them and find out where they hang out. We know where they live, sir. Any special instructions? No, no, just look for the unusual. Any news of Mr. Levitt? He's not at his office. We've checked the hospitals and the mortuary. The usual inquiry, sir. Blank. Inspector, is there any news? I've telephoned his office and he hasn't come in. He's been missing since yesterday. I know. I'm sorry, but we can't raise him anywhere. We've got to get some grub. We usually go to a little place at the back of the market here. If we don't turn up, somebody might start asking questions. Why don't you come along too, Captain? You're kind of a tryout. No one would recognize you, but you'd have to trust us. Would you do that? Would you, Jack? That's what I was leading up to. I knows all about this treasure nobody spoke about yet. It was Rolly uh, asked me to try and find you. We gotta be in on it, Captain. We gotta be. But I always meant you should. I knew it! You was never one to let your mates down. Cut that! Of course I was. And so is any man who isn't mental. I face facts. If it didn't suit you to be trusted, I couldn't trust you. As long as it suits us to go along with one another, We'll go along, won't we? That's fair. Did you... Did you see the stuff, Jack? You sound like a kid dreaming of ice cream. Of course I didn't see it. It was well hidden. That's why it's still there. Waiting for us to pick it up. Bought in, Bishop's Gate. Yes, now the place well runs right through under the greengrocers. There shouldn't be any difficulty. Usually no one there at this time of the morning. They're all over the grub shop having breakfast. Very good, Sergeant. To this day, I don't rightly know what the raid was about. Remember, Rowley? That I do. It was the Major's house. He lived there as a little boy. He told me where to go and where I'd find everything. It were a long time ago. I got master call. Are you going to tell him, Rowley, or am I? No, no. You, Jack. We had to make it look like a burglary. It was nice the way they taught you things in the army. To think we used to get paid for it. Heroes we were. When I came out of the downstairs window, the Major was dragging a huge great box down the steps. 
When we all got back to the boat, I was so caught up, I had to know a bit more about that box. So I asked him, kind of casual, like what he got there. You know, made a joke out of it. Family plate, I said. No, he said. And he was thinking of something else all the time. Something called the Santa Deal Treasure, he said. So then I asked him if it was worth a lot of money. You know, just casual like. It's priceless, he said. Now this is the important bit. He was the last of the family. So then I asked him what would happen if he, if he got hit or something. And then this Elgin said the damnedest thing. He said, it's up to the man my wife marries. I've left full instructions in a sealed envelope and he'll get it on his wedding day. Now listen, I've got this all worked out. And the first thing to get is this envelope. That's vital. Who did he leave it with? His wife? Now, nah, a woman might have opened it. His lawyer, I thought. So that's where you went on the bash last night. What makes you think this stuff's still gonna be there? Because it's waiting for me. I meant to find it. I knew that as soon as I heard of it, for the first time that night on the raid. You won't understand this, but I'm going to tell you all the same. <laughs> Elgin had to confide in me. We had to go on that trip together. You could tell by the queer way it happened, I was special. There were half a million other sergeants in the army, might have been picked for that raid, but they had to pick on me. Do you know where I was? Under guard, waiting for our court-martial. Fetched out, rent restored and paired with Elgin. You think there's nothing in all this? Sounds like some sort of religion to me. Religion? This is the thing religion goes soft on. It's a science. The science of luck, that's what I call it. Well, listen to this thing. When I was training with Elgin, I found out without him knowing that I knew the people he knew. He was the only officer in the whole British Army I was in a position to watch all the time. I knew someone who was close to him, see? Oh, I told you, you'd never understand it! That was yours, dear? No, turnips. Yeah, give them here. Seen the boys this morning? Hey, who? That's uh, three and eight together, dear. The street band. No, them gone out yet. Uh, Forms changed, dear. Uh, yeah, I'll give you five shillings. They're late, aren't they? It's gone nine o'clock. It's that stove. It's that cook stove of theirs. There's a case in the papers. For having a lay-in, I expect. Don't blame a morning like this. Old family, it was suffocated. Yes, I see that. And you better have a look. That was two half crowns I'll give you. I knew Elgin's wife was going to be married again two months before it was announced. Married again? Don't say the new fellow's already got the envelope. No, I've been clever. We sent her some pictures of Duds dressed up like the Major. Thought she'd call off the wedding. And the envelope? It wasn't at the lawyer's? No. I'll get it though, don't you worry. I went to another place last night. The new bloke's house. Then he got caught too. There was someone in the house, a woman. I smelled her scent. I went after her, but she got behind a door. Then the police arrived. I think it might have been her, Mrs. Elgin. I think it must have been. If only you wouldn't know. We'd have had all the time in the world. Well, if I hadn't been interrupted, I'm not going soft, are you, have it? Oh, shut up, Tiddy, can't you? I thought the woman in Levitt's house was. Well, it might have been house. Any... Whose house did you say? Levitt, Jeffrey Levitt's, the new bloke. Why? You ever heard that name before? Anybody in? Come on, lads, come on. Time we was up and about. Tom, you in the front there. Look lively, lad. That's the idea. Uncle, come along. We're late for it now. Get going. Trumps, all cigar and everything. Left, left, left. Dear. You 
got us back here to the cellar. Oh, are they all right? Yes, yes. No, I'm sure one of the lads has left a cigarette burning. Yes, he were. Real careless, some people. Like that. I'm so afraid you might suddenly disappear again. Like the Cheshire cat. It's the grin, dear boy, not the cat that appeared and disappeared. Like the word treasure threading its way in and out of your story. <laughs> and just about as ridiculous. There can't be any treasure. Havoc swore there was. Or rather that Martin had said there was. Have you seen the look in his eyes? Fanatical. He was quite certain of it. Your mail, sir. Well, come on, open it up. It's what you're looking for, isn't it? Major Martin gave me the letter right enough. It was in the pulpit all the time. Tell me not to hand it over till after the ceremony. And I wouldn't have done in ordinary circumstances, but these aren't ordinary. And there are times when a man should use his own judgment. If you get this at all, I shall be out of the picture. Intrusion into your life rather much, but there is something you have got to do. Old storehouse, garden, Santo deal. Treasure. Job too dangerous for either Mac or her father, should there still be a state of war. The treasure is portable, but it will take great care. Get it the instant you feel it is at all practicable, and give it to Meg. Give her my love. Yours very truly, Martin Elgin, Major. Breathing over it. 
Thank you, my darling. You know, I, I long to go over to Brittany and find out exactly what it is. And a moment ago, you said it didn't exist. <laughs> Meg, let's go at once, tonight. Oh, but, but... We could drive down to Southampton and take the night boat to St. Malo. We could be there sometime tomorrow. What do you say? Oh, what a wonderful idea. Father, what do you say? Is it of any consequence what I say? Oh, darling, uh, it won't take me a minute to pack something. And where's the cock? In the garage, uh, it won't take just me a minute. a minute, cock. I don't want to spoil your fun, but don't you think it'd be a good idea to let little old Inspector Luke in on the secret? All very fine. Nice little jaunt, the fun in parts, can't do any harm. Better out of the way, both of them. What do they expect to find? Treasure. Treasure boy, that's all. Nothing simple, ordinary, like four men, like we expect to find. Expect to find them hours ago. Where are they? You tell me. Simple enough. A man with pink eyes and white hair, two Dorset fishermen, one of them balmy, and a homicidal maniac. Come on. Oh, where are we going, Inspector? Cannon. Knows something. Doesn't know he knows it. Got me? You got a theory of some sort? Yes. Run out of facts. Finally reduced to theory. You saw Mrs. Cash today? I did. Look ill, did she? It was dark in the doorway. I know, and you didn't stay long. Heard that. She had a son, Ma Cash. Happen to know, sir, exactly when he died? Not the year, exactly, no. It was just after Epiphany. Early January. Well, he was about 15. Put in my information. He died in the country and the body brought to London for burial. You were ill at the time, Cannon. Your late wife saw Mrs. Cash for you. Do you happen to know, sir, if anybody but Mark Cash saw the body? No. No, not as far as I know. Why do you ask? Well, sir. If nobody else saw the body, it could have been substitution. Tricky, but it could have been. That's the bird we're after. A man's killing mad. I'm leaving Sergeant Pickett with you, sir. Oh, how very thoughtful of you, Inspector. But I can't believe it's really necessary. I can. Best be safe. Oh, very well. But I'm afraid it'll be so very uncomfortable for the sergeant. But if you insist... I do. On this occasion, leave me to do the judging. Good night. Good night. think you're doing? Now you're not to interfere, Will. Ever since this trouble started, the cannons had hardly any sleep at all. How do you know? Now, Will, you take this up to him straight away and you're to see that he drinks it, mind. I know just what you're going to say, but it's no good arguing. Take it away, Will. I won't drink it. Well, personally, I'd rather have hot rum, except that I've given up drinking. As you know, to me cost. I hate hot milk, and Mrs. Talisman knows it perfectly well. Come on, have a go. Skin and all. Just the ones. Well, sweet dreams. You look as if you could do with them. Good night. Good night, Will. Sergeant? Yes, sir? Do you happen to like hot milk? Yes, I'm very fond of it, sir.
Johnny Cash, come down. There's nothing up there for you at all. Shut up. You're alone? Of course I'm alone. You tipped them off, though. No. No one knows you and I are here. You old fool. Come and sit down. You must be so tired, Johnny. My name's Jack. I spoke this afternoon to your mother. I thought you might come here. What are you doing here? I'm not trying to save my soul by any chance. Oh, no. That's your own affair from the beginning to the end. In any case, what is a soul? When I was a small boy, I used to think of it as a little ghostly, kidney-shaped bean. Now I think of it as the man I'm with when I'm alone. Neither definition would satisfy a theologian. Why did you come here, then? I don't know. All I can tell you is that greatly against my will, I had to. I've known something like it to happen before, and I believe, unless I've been misled by some weakness or stupidity of my own, I shall see why eventually. That's it. That's it. You had to do it. It works every time. The science of luck. The science of luck. Ever heard of it before? Not under that name. Well, that's my name for it. What do you call it? The pursuit of death. It's a known thing, then? You didn't discover it, my son. Yeah. Yeah, never go soft. That's it, isn't it? I know, I proved it. Keep realistic and you get places fast. Everything's easy. Goes right for you. Yes, that's it. Facilis de sensus aferno. It is easier to fall downstairs than to climb up. But... If you can see what I can, why don't you profit by it? Evil be my good. That's what you've discovered. And it's the one sin which cannot be forgiven you. Because when it's finished with you, you're no longer there to forgive. That stuff's all rubbish. I don't believe you. I can hear you do, Johnny. Suppose, Johnny Cash, just suppose you had got to Santo Dio Somer. Where? Santo Dio Somer. Saint Odile on Sea, a little village near St. Marlowe in Brittany. Just suppose... What's the name of the house? The same. Oh, but you must put all thought of that out of your mind. Jeffrey Levitt's gone there tonight, and if you... Got it! The science of luck. It's done it again. You told me the only thing I had to know. Swear it on anything you like, but swear you'll keep quiet. It's no good, Johnny. I could swear, and you could let me go. But in the end, when you come to grief, as you will, you'll tell yourself that you went soft, and you will forever blame that one act. No. Either make a full turn, or go your own way. You fool! You old fool! Do you want it? Are you asking for it? I want very much to stay alive. More than I would have believed. But you put that doubt in my mind. I can't go soft. I cannot help you. Our gods are within us. We choose our own compulsions. Our souls are our own.
my cash. No good, sir, I'm afraid. I can't get another word out of it. The same refrain over and over again. I don't know. I can't help you. Find out. Go back. Try it again. Set it to music. Right. Substitution. Yes, sir. Well, she won't wear it. She'll have to wear it. It's the only thing that makes any sense. Here you are, sir, at last. Apparently they had great difficulty. There wasn't much to go on. Rowley and Tom. Roland and Thomas Gripper, Dorset fishermen. Convicted and jailed for smuggling offences. Good lad. You'll learn. Luke? Oh, Jones here, sir. How's the cannon? Uh, the old boy's very weak, but they say he'll live, sir. A lucky thing Mrs. Talisman went to check about the hot milk. Statement yet? Yes, sir. Apparently the cannon told Havoc the name of the place in France and that Levitt's already gone over. Huh. Stay with him. Very good, sir. Some people lucky. Cannon for one. This case probably a question of God taking care of his own. Like a little luck to come our way. Good morning, sir. Still fond of hot milk, Pickett? Looks like we're onto something, Inspector. They found a small truck abandoned near Pool in Dorset. So? Belongs to a family named Ray. They have a bakery shop around the corner here. To also in debt to Mar Cash. Haven't dared report his loss. Pool, Simmons. They're coming through on the line now, sir. Inspector Byrne, be it. Just suppose those lads try to stage the raid again. first. You'll see him. some tools in the car. Wait a moment.
Bonjour. Est-ce que vous êtes le jardinier Nous cherchons des outils pour ouvrir ces serrures. Auriez-vous quelque chose pour cela Speak English. Something thinner. Is it? It's heavenly. Not worth a thing. Not a red cent, is it? Just a lousy bit of carving. It's priceless. What's that mean? It's above value. <laughs> of all the... You mean to tell me that after everything I've worked for all these stinking years, I... I'll make it priceless, all right. I'll smash it to smithereens! You remind me of somebody I knew once. A little boy who used to live next door. Johnny Cash, he was called. He once took away my toy theater and tore it up to get the glitter out of it. All he got was old bits of paper. Nothing else. Jack, here I come. Tis Rowley. Oh, no. No. No, no. No, go. Just now when you slipped, you fought to live. Let me go. No, Hammock. You have to face up to it. Just this once, you're not going to be yellow. 